Alright, hey guys, and welcome back to the final episode in my Mio's Finest series. This time we take on Telethia the Endbringer using Celica without using Decoy slash um, Ghostwalker. As per usual, I'm going to kind of talk about how Celica plays as a character and then getting into the build that I'm going to be using here today. So, Celica as a character is, in terms of gameplay, is she's probably, in my opinion, one of the better characters in the game. She does have some shortcomings and does struggle to a bit and being um, more difficult to use than some of the other really good characters like Fog and Elma, but I feel like she has enough to set herself apart that makes her definitely worth using. So let's go ahead and get into her arts to go ahead and kind of start talking about what I mean by that. So first let's get the bat out of the way, her being more difficult to use than Fog or Elma. Silica has Knife as her um, melee weapon, which means that she doesn't have access to Blood Sacrifice or Side Slash, which are what make... Um, Elma and Fog so easy to use, and what makes them probably, in conjunction with Ghostwalker, some of the best characters in the game. Silica does still have access to Ghostwalker, but her only purple art is um, Screamer, which is not nearly consistent enough or good enough to be a primary source of TP income. Because of this, she becomes quite a bit more difficult to use than the other two dual guns users, and she can kind of be overshadowed for that reason. However, I still personally think that she has a lot of really good qualities that set her apart, and that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about here now. So, first of all, is that she has access to... The two biggest things that she has going for her is that she has Knife as her melee weapon, and access to Combat Limbo. So Combat Limbo will give you Effect Stasis, and basically what this does is it pauses the cooldowns of all of your other buffs and auras for the duration of Effect Stasis. This means that a lot of the really good buffs that you can get but have short durations, such as um, the Critical Power from Primer or the Potential Boot, the Potential Up from Energy Source, can be extended without having to refresh them. This also means that if you get the plus one tier from those, from refreshing the buff, you, as long as you keep combat limbo up, you will have it for the rest of the battle, which is a incredible boon. And as I mentioned just a second ago, Energy Source is probably um, one of Celica's best buffing arts. This grants potential up five, and if you refresh it onto yourself while you already have potential up five, you have a chance of getting potential up six with potential up 6 granting you a 100% potential boost, basically. Which is really good, because one of Celica's best damaging arts is Executioner, more on that in a minute. Um, aside from that, I'll kind of finish going through her buffing arts now, um, starting from the top of the list. Repair is a solid art for cleansing debuffs, of course, but it also gives you a bit of recovery, 10% of your HP. Ghostwalker, um, always a great art, probably one of the best arts in the game, if not just flat out the best art in the game. Though I don't find myself... Typically if you want a Ghostwalker from a, um, a non-cross character, you will run Fog or Elma because they're a lot easier to use. Celica is definitely more than capable of using herself. Um, Primer, grants critical power up and boosts DP. Just a really solid art, no real reason not to run it, especially with effect, um, Combat Limbo. And then I think there's one more. Absorber Skin. Grants Barrier can be used on an ally, so you can target it and run it more supportively if you want someone else to do the tanking. Generally just a very solid art to have, helps with tanking quite a bit. So now let's go ahead and get into Celica's Auras. And basically almost every time you use Celica, you're going to be wanting to run full specs, which is another aura that the other two dual guns don't have access to. Um, full specs essentially boosts your range attack and ether resistance and potential. And this is really nice for Celica because she has access to 0-0, which is a really solid dual guns art that scales off of ranged attack. It's definitely nowhere near as strong as Executioner, but it is really nice to have the ranged attack buff on full specs for that. Um, then the boosted ether resistance is really nice for super bosses because both Telethia and Pharsis use a handful of ether arts. Telethia almost exclusively and Pharsis has one or two, depending on how you count it. Um, and yeah, so just a really solid aura all around. And finally is Early Bird. Um, it's not a bad aura, it's just that you're never really going to want to run it over full specs, because full specs just tends to do more for you. Um, one more thing of note 
worth knowing on Celica is that she does have access to both Black Butterfly and Black Bane. These are quite good arts, but I don't really like them on Celica because she just can't inflict a ton of debuffs herself. Um, even just Black Butterfly and Black Bane alone is enough to make a pretty decent melee build, but I just feel like Celica is better spec into other areas, especially since she doesn't really have a useful aura for a Black Bane build. With all that out of the way, I think I'm finally ready to start talking about the build that I'm going to be running here today. So, the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to my build is the no Ghost Walker part. And I'll get more into this later, but there is a style of build in this game called No Big Four, or there's a few other names for it, but it's essentially a build that does not utilize any of Astral Protection, Decoy, Reflect, or Core Crusher, which are generally considered to be four of the, if not the four strongest skills and um, buffs in the game. Um, I'll get a bit more into some of this later on, but just know that this build will not be using Decoy or Ghostwalker because this is a no big four build. So here are my stats and resistances. Also worth noting right now is that I do have the um, debuff resistance up probes stacked up to the tier five. So I am getting 15 more points into each resistance than you see here. So. Here's my gear, I'll go ahead and scroll through it so you can see what it is before I start talking about it. And basically I'm running, for all my running pretty much the, just standard stuff, physical and ether resistance. And I want to have um, 200 control, 200 sleep, and 200 topple resistance so that I can't get inflicted by any of Teletio's most important debuffs. In addition to just these debuffs being really annoying, if you are immune to all of them, you will never have to deal with Teletheus Electric Attack, which means that you don't have to stack into Electric Resistance and you can kind of invest those extra Augment and Gear slots other uh, to other places. So next, let's talk about my weapons. So one thing that you might know is that I am not running Night Vision, and that's because Teletheus fights tend to be pretty long, especially with the Lure in Phase 3. Because of this relying on night vision, I find it not, just not be very consistent. And I typically prefer to run, range, just simply range or melee accuracy up for this fight in particular, which is why I'm just running two ranged accuracy boost augments when I could technically get away with just one night vision. Aside from that, um, most of my battle traits are focused into potential up and potential boost because execution is just a lot better art than 0, zero though 0, zero is definitely not a bad art. With the combination of energy source and full specs, um, execution is just going to be doing way more damage. Um, this is also why I'm running Appendage Crusher over some like more ranged attack up. Is Appendage Crusher just scales better with the build that I'm running, even though it's only one augment of Appendage Crusher. Um, the other thing with noise, I'm running two arts gain TP up augments and a overdrive count up, which probably seems a bit silly to some people. But during the Lure in Phase 3, you're not going to be able to attack Teletia, and you really need to be able to maintain your overdrive so you can keep your buffs up and um, just survive, basically survive the Lure. So that's why I'm running those. To get into my arts now, um, I'm running full specs for my aura. As I mentioned before, this is probably just flat out Celica's best aura, no competition there. And um, yeah, I don't really have a lot more to say about that. The extra ether resistance is super nice, and then boosted range attack and potential is going to be making me do a lot more damage. Next is Absorber Skin, Grants Barrier. I'm not going to have 100 um, physical resistance for Phase 2, so this will help me survive a little bit better during that, as well as any straight hits that I might happen to get hit by without the um, tier, without the aura tier level 6 from full specs. Repair Cleanse is super useful for super boss fights. Against this fight, it's mostly going to be used to um, cleanse off ether resistance down to let the inflicts on me. Primer, just a really solid, um, really solid art. It gives you extra TP, grants you critical power, which increases your damage by a bit. Super nice to have. And there's really nothing else that's overly worth running in that slot. Energy source, boosting potential is incredible since my main art that's going to be dealing damage to Executioner. As I already mentioned, um, well, I don't think I said this specifically, but potential up 5 will give you 80% boost to potential, and potential up 6 will give you a 100% boost, which is a significant increase in damage. Combat Limbo, I talked, I sung high praise of this earlier, um, probably one of the best arts that Celica has over the other dual guns users. Then Zero Zero and Execution are just my DPS skills, or DPS arts. 
For skills, I'm running Steady Hand, um, Inner Search, and Red Zone. There's nothing else to really run on Celica, and Red Zone does boost Critical Chance, which does make it pretty nice for synergizing with um, the Critical Power from, Zero, er, from Primer. So all that way, I'm going to go ahead and get into the fight. And I'm going to have to kind of cut away that just because of Talatia flying around. I don't want to make you guys wait for it. So I'll see you in a second. Alright, time for the battle. Basically, just going to want to target out there, really any appendage. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to want to try and get Talatia to stop about face with this mountain here, since this is where we're going to be standing for the fight. I'm pretty much just going to want to get out of my skill as soon as I am able. Yeah, full spec so I don't die. Let me start my overdrive. Building overdrive count is pretty fast due to the fact that I have multiple high hit count arts plus the overdrive count up. Go and get my secondary cooldown full spec. I can pretty much just start going for damage at this point. Go ahead and pop some. Energy sources. Two six buff. I don't think I got it, but you know. I'm gonna want to cleanse off that ego. This is down pretty quickly. And it's meant to click um, zero zero there, but that's fine. And there's not really a whole lot that Tlati can do that's super intimidating during this phase. She'll only be using e cards. The only really annoying thing she can do is that she can actually inflict launch and kind of launch you down this mountain. But if your positioning is good, she won't really be able to, um... She won't be able to get you with too annoying of an angle with it. That was actually one of the launching attacks that she can use. I blocked it with the Executioner, and I think we're heading down now? Yeah. So once again, just going to kind of want to target onto any old appendage and just head down to where Tlucky is going to land. So phase two, things do change up a bit. Tlucky is going to start using physical attacks, which is what I need the physical assistance for. And she can also inflict a few annoying um, debuffs like um, Knockback, I think it's called. Stagger one of the two. I think it's knockback. But either way, nothing too scary. It's just gonna want to start the overdrive. I didn't mean to click that. Get my full specs up. And once again, this will be a pretty fast um, phase. Yeah, they're not back. It's not really a whole lot to comment on here. I'm just going to kind of be focusing on getting my damage out. And yeah, Tlucky will just kind of... This phase just takes a little bit. Not too scary. I think that she just can't my execution, so that's really unfortunate. Getting some good damage off the... Also with knowing that Telethia does actually, I believe, have lower evasion during this phase than the other one. I'm not actually positive about that, so I should say that. But, um... She is relatively easy to hit during this phase, at least compared to phase 3, where she will have some pretty annoying auras that will keep you from... that will effectively boost your accuracy during one, just force attacks into missing for the other. Slow arts from her spike does make this fight, this phase, take a little bit longer than it realistically needs to, but it's fine. 
Not really a whole lot more to say, so I'll probably just be quiet for the rest of this phase. There's the end of the phase. You want to make sure that we sleep, that most of your buffing arts have um, tier two cooldowns before going up in the sky, just so it makes starting your overdrive again pretty easy. And now we're going to follow to let the back up in the sky and begin the lure. Uh, for anyone who doesn't really want to watch the lure, I will have a timestamp in the description as well as um, chapters on the video, so you'll know where to skip to in order to. Um, skip over that if you are not interested in seeing me bring Talatia back down for, you know, three to five minutes. It's just need to get here for a second to get Talatia to attack us for something, now we can just leave. So I like to land here around the, the data probe, and then I'll just go ahead and get out and start my overdrive. And basically, Telethia is going to be flying down towards us, so we're going to be wanting to bring her basically just close to the ground and towards an area where we can hit her. Cleanse off the ether, this is down inflicts it. Inflicts it, and there's really not really a lot more to say during the blue itself. You're gonna to want to make sure your overdrive count is pretty much max for whenever you get to Lethia and do the spot where you want her, but that's realistically not that hard to do. And that, just make sure you're keeping your buffs up, your full specs up so that you don't die, all that good stuff. I typically like to build my overdrive count pretty quickly, pretty early on, just because it makes it a lot easier to maintain. And this is, again, why I said that you're probably going to want to be running um, or it's getting TP and overdrive count for this fight. I hang out a little bit further outwards there than I realistically need to, but I've had times where she's gotten stuck on some stuff because I didn't. So nowadays I just play that a little bit better safe than sorry. So after you kind of go here where you fought towards the hit phase 2, you're pretty much just going to want to bring her towards the entrance to Divine Mist. And that should get her into a spot that's pretty easy to manage. Okay, right now, fresh full specs. As well as combat window. Stop the ether as down. And just keep running. And this blur is. The overdrive blur is so annoying in this game. do the lure, I like to essentially run over here to these cliffs. This usually gives Slutia more than enough, um, so bring her around towards that other stick out in the cliff there, which gives you a nice place to where you don't have to worry about getting launched because you'll get pushed against the cliff and she is more than within range of even melee attacks. So. actually wearing through the decoy. I guess it's soul read for her, but it's basically a decoy. 
So you're just gonna kinda wanna get up here in these cliffs somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Because you basically wanna get to the wing of your launch, you land kind of over here in the corner. Then you're just gonna kinda be spamming 0 0 and execution to chunk through her solely. Keep your overdrive up, your buffs up. Doesn't look like I got my position too well because she pushed me past that point, but it's fine. Ether is down, gonna want to cleanse that off. Maybe yeah, this will be a better position. And because you're just going to be missing all your hits right now, the secondary and tertiary cooldowns might be damaging, like, don't really matter. Just kind of use them whenever they're on cooldown. You can also get some auto attacks and then get a little bit of extra hit count. But it's fine. He throws down, you want to cut that off. Starting to damage now, so that means that we're out of the soul lead. So, like, it should be more than capable of one side point. Launch that's a bit annoying. Kind of keep wheeling away on the block here. I'll probably just let the battle uh, talk for itself for the rest of this because I don't really have too much more to say, so I'll see if either something interesting happens or otherwise I'll see at the end of the fight. Thank <laughs> you. 
and Vegoslavia. So, I do hope that you have enjoyed this little showcase of Celica. This video isn't quite over yet. I do have a little bit I want to talk about as far as the series in general, and kind of just some closing thoughts on it. So I think I'm going to go find some nice scenic view for us to, for me to talk over, and I will see you guys in a short second. Alright, so I have quite a bit to talk about, and I imagine that most people probably aren't going to be sticking off for this portion of the video, so for those of you that do, I apologize for rambling. Um, first thing I think I'm going to talk about is the idea of these no big four builds that I talked about earlier. These are the things that really got me into this game, aside from just the no my normal casual playthrough. The things that hooked me into this game for hundreds of hours into now thousands of, well over a thousand, close to 1500 hours over the course of the past five years and what has made this one of my favorite games of all time. If you're interested in playing this game in a different way and you haven't given a No Big Four build a, ch a chance, once again No Big Four being um, not using Astral Protection, Decoy, um, Reflect, or Core Crusher, I sincerely recommend giving it a try. It's a different way of playing the game than most people have probably played it, and I find it to be a very enjoyable experience personally. So the next thing I want to talk about is the series as a whole. The series basically started as a way for me to j make a joke at one of my friends for liking L, and it evolved into what has been over 100 hours of gameplay for me through recording different clips and farming gear to make my builds just the way I wanted them to be or just good enough for what I wanted them to be sometimes. And even a bit of learning along the way, courtesy of um, Aberax commenting on some of my videos. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. If I'm not, then I do apologize. Um, but just this whole experience has been something that I never really imagined it being. I didn't really... When I first started this, I didn't intend this to become a series of me playing through every non-cross character and doing a super boss battle with it. But the moment that I did decide that I was going to do that, I knew that I wanted Celica to be the fight that I did for the finale. And the reason for that is that the build that I showed here today is a modification of a build I made back in November of 2016. Back whenever people were still playing around with no big four builds, there was a few people in the community playing around with it, and some people had theory crafted a on foot solo build for Telethia. And the conclusion that at least some of the bigger people and that I had seen talking about it came to was the only way that any NPC or any non cross character could do it was murderous using astral protection. And I wasn't satisfied with that personally, so I went to the drawing board and I came up with a build for Celica. I actually came up with two builds for Celica. Now, both of those builds are different than the one that I showed here today, and I will probably link a pace bin in the description for anyone who's interested with the specifics of what I ran on those builds, just in case anyone wants to see them and so that they aren't lost to time. But Again, this was a build that I made in, I believe, November 16th of 2016, so over four years ago at this point. And at the time, I, at the time, I, I'm almost positive I was the only person to have been Telethia the Endbringer with a, um, a character second cross without using Big Four. I imagine I'm not the only person who's done it now, but at the time, I'm pretty sure I was. It's hard to track those kind of things down, but nonetheless, it was something I was extremely proud of. I don't want to go off too much a tangent about um, things I've done in the past with this game, because that's not what this video is supposed to be about, but this fight and finishing off this series with it, it means a lot to me, and I have I really hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. And finally, I want to give shouts to a few people. As I mentioned before, I want to give a shout to Abrax. Still not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, I haven't really talked to him much, but I know that he's a super knowledgeable person, and he has corrected me on a few things throughout the series, and has helped the series become a little bit less bad because of that. Um, next, I want to give a shout out to some of my friends. I'm not going to name them by name. You know who you are, but if you're still watching this series, and you may, you're actually watching the outro of the series, I want to thank you for, to a certain extent, supporting me throughout this, and more than anything else, just listening to me ramble about how much I love this game over the past few years that I've known you guys. 
And finally, I want to give shouts to the old um, on foot solo No Big Four community from way back in the day. Without them, I wouldn't have gotten into this game nearly as much as I have, and without them, I wouldn't be making the series here today. So with all that out of the way, I think that's about all I have to say. I do really hope that you have enjoyed this video and this series. Um, I'm not done with Xenoblade X, I'm going to be doing some more builds, there's a few more things I want to do in the future, but that is a journey for another day. So I think that with that all that out of the way, I think I'm going to be heading out, and I hope you guys have a good one. See ya.